Hi, welcome back. Time to actually use MongoDB in our Express application. To get started, I will first also, as always, create a new folder, which I will call MongoDB. And I will copy the structure from section seven, lecture seven, get posts, because I don't need validation session management in this video here, so that's fine. And in here, this is how the package of JSON file looks like. In here, in here, I first want to install a new package, the MongoDB package, of course. So let me cd into this new folder. And then I run npm install minus minus save MongoDB. And this will install the official MongoDB Express extension or the general Node.js MongoDB driver. So whatever can use MongoDB. So this is done as you can see, it updated it here. And now we don't have to set up anything, we can use it straight away. And first is I want to create a pleasant front end. And I prepared something here as it is really just some HTML and styles. So let me copy that into my project. So first the styling here. And then, don't need the test view by the way. And then here, some HTML. All this will do if I run this server here. Oh, and I have to stop the other server first. So let me run the server. If I reload, this is what I created, which will allow us, allow us to do the four CRUD operations, insert data, getting data, update, and deleting data. So this is just the layout of the view. And of course, you'll find the code in the GitHub repository as always. With that out of the way, let's jump right into our index.js file in the routes directory. Get rid of all the other routes here for the moment. And then I need to add two imports here at the top. The first is called Mongo. And this requires, of course, MongoDB. The next is called assert. Requires assert and this is a built-in package in Node.js, normally used for, for testing. It allows us to compare values and so on. And we use this when we connect to our MongoDB database or when we do some operations here there to check if everything went right. The next thing is I will set up the URL which points to the database. This will be a string. And now this is of course not, not optional and not arbitrarily. Um, it is mongodb dot uh, colon slash slash and then localhost as it is running on our local machine here. We're doing all the development here on our local machine as you probably noticed. And then it's by default port 27017. But you may check this here in the terminal where your server is running. When it started up, the very first message here said the port or specified the port on which it's running. 27017 in my case here, and this is the default. So this will connect to this MongoDB. Then we add another part to this URL in this case, slash test, which defines the database we want to use in our running MongoDB server. So in this case, we'll use the built-in test database, which we already have. Now with this out of the way, I will also change this to just render my index page here. And then I will set up some new routes, which I will need. I want to have a route to get the data. Let's call this get data. And I won't do anything there as of now. I will, just add, I will add this step by step. Then I will have a post route insert. Oh, by the way, here I probably should add this. That's uh, more correct this way. 
And this insert route, this post route, I'll copy this two times. Because I'll also have an update post route and a delete post route. Let's start with inserting items. In my insert route from my view, from the form I have here for inserting items, I will get a title, content and offer. So in here, I will extract these parameters and create a new item which I want to insert. So this will be a JavaScript object, which of course will, as I just said, have a title. I'll find this in the body of my post request and there it will have, well, a property of title because that's the name of the form field. Then I will have content, which is request body content. And then I will have my offer request body offer and I have a typo content. So this will be the item I want to insert. And after inserting, I want to redirect to let's say my root route, my, yeah, this, this index route here. Now this is the interesting part, actually inserting the item. So to actually insert something, I will call Mongo connect, connect to the database. I specify the URL to connect to, and then I call back once the connection has been well established or possibly declined, uh, denied. So uh, here I will have an error if we do have one or the database if we were successful. I will then use assert to, e to check if well, if we do have an error or to check if we don't have an error to be precise. And if we don't have one, it's fine. We will continue. I will then access my database. I'm typing too fast here. Access my database, which I got back to which I connected. Use the collection method on this. And here I will specify the name of the collection into which I want to insert my data. Now, the collection is not the same as the database. The database is test, but one database might have multiple collections, like a SQL database might have multiple tables. So I may enter whatever name I like here. I will just call this user data. This will be the name of my collection. And here I will use the insert one method to insert exactly one entry. This entry I insert will be my item here, of course. This function has another argument, which will be the callback once this insertion has been completed or again, an error has occurred. So I get the error or a result. I will again assert if we don't have an error so that we only continue if we do not have an error. And then I just want to well, log to the console that we inserted the item and then I will close the database connection by typing or using dbclose. Now we could test this, but as of now, we would not be able to see if it worked because we haven't specified the get data functionality. So let's do this next. To get data, I will also open a connection to my database here. So I will use mongo connect to the URL and have the very same function or callback I did have when I was inserting items, of course because this is just a connection thing here. I will then copy that assert test here or just check if we do have an error. And if we don't have an error, I will get the items. Now getting the items is a little bit different to inserting one because here obviously we're just, well, pushing something into our database, but we don't have to store any result value. Here I will get something back. So I will create a new variable which I will call cursor because it will be a cursor pointing to, well, the data we're getting back. And I will use DB collection again and use, of course, the same collection as below when we insert the data. But now I will call the find method, which will get me all the entries in this collection. And all these entries or pointers to these entries are stored in this cursor variable. Now, in order to get the actual data, 
I will run through all the entries I found by using cursor for each and then a function which should be executed on each of these items. So this function will be one that has first uh, argument which will be the current document and possible error. Again, let's assert that error that the error is null. And then I want to store the actual value in some array which I will, once I've got all the values, return to our view. So in order to do this I will create a new variable here at the top which I will call result array which is an empty array at the beginning and here I will then push all the items I'm extracting here. So I will push doc which is the current item where we're, in, we're at the current iteration so we're running through all the items our cursor points to and then we're getting each item in each iteration which will be stored in this doc variable here and we just push this doc variable onto our results array. So this will be the items through which we run and then I will have another call back here in my for each loop because this will be executed on each iteration but after all these iterations I will have a callback which is executed once, well, once I've looped through all the items I'm pointing to. So in this case I then want to close my database because I'm finished, I'm done, I retrieved all the items I wanted and I will render my index page and this is important, I do this in this callback because if I would do this outside of this whole block here it would get executed immediately because this block runs asynchronously. This means we start it and then we immediately continue with the next command we might have here. So if we render our view here it would not actually have the data because this might not have yet finished. So we couldn't output the data. Therefore we're rendering the view once we're sure that we're done fetching all the data. And here I will render the index page and I will pass the items, the result array I created. And items is a variable which is used in the view here to output them. So that's been a lot of coding. Let me restart the server and I get an error here. Right, this should be a third equal of course. So let me restart the server, reload this page, load data, won't get me anything insert some data like this is a test test the content by me and now let's load data and I do have a tiny mistake here this should be error so now we start and let's try this this is a test test content max insert load data and I also got some other data. This is because behind the scenes I was uh, looking for this error here and I well tested it of course and therefore I have other data here. But this is the data in our database and this is how we insert data. Now regarding updating and deleting we'll have a look at this in the next video. See you there. Bye.